if you've clicked on this video, you probably clicked on it, waiting for me to either say, A, rah, 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 Francis has finally accomplished what no pope in the last 80 years could muster. The one true, valid consecration of Russia to the most immaculate heart of Mary, Deo Gratias. Maybe you're expecting me to say A or B. Boo, hiss, Francis failed. Maybe you're expecting me to say this is a mockery of God. This is a sacrilege. It was definitely invalid. Prepare for wrath upon earth. Which is it, Taylor? Is it A, rah, rah, rah? A moment of of glory, one of the highest points in church history, obedience to Our Lady and the consecration of Russia, or is it B, boo, Debbie Downer, discouragement, invalid. Before I get to that, I want to say something that's going to lift your spirits, and that is this. The Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, the New Eve, the Ark of the New Covenant, has stated that Russia will be consecrated and Russia will be converted. It will happen. It's a 100% guarantee that this will happen. Russia will be converted. It will happen. It's not a lie. We should be optimistic. We should be thankful that Our Lady has promised that. You know, Our Lady never came, as far as I know, and said, you know what? Before the second coming of my son, Jesus Christ, Ireland's going to come back strong. Or United States. Or Poland. She did promise that Russia will be converted. It's a 100% guarantee. And what does converted mean? Well, I'm going to take a text here from Father Joaquin Alonso. He was the official archivist of Fatima. He talked to Sister Lucia many times, and here's what he said. The conversion of Russia is not to be limited to the return of the Russian people to the Orthodox Christian religion rejecting the Marxist atheism of the Soviets, but rather it refers purely, plainly, and simply to the total integral conversion of Russia to the one true Catholic Church, the Church of Christ. End quote. That's what the official archivist of Fatima, Father Joaquin Alonso, who spoke to Sister Lucia. So we know for a fact that the consecration of Russia will infallibly, 100% guarantee the conversion of the Russian people, presumably that means the Russian government, to the Catholic faith. I talked last week with Matt Gaspers. It's been inquired. Does that mean that they're going to become Roman Catholic, have the Latin Mass? No, they'll continue to have the divine liturgy of St. John Chrysostom. That's their patrimony. They will be Eastern Rite Catholics, but they will be in full union with Rome. So, if the consecration that happened three days ago is it, it's legit, it's valid, it is the one we should expect the miraculous conversion of the Russian people. We should expect the Russian president or leader or czar to recognize Rome, to repent, and to come into full communion with the Pope. We should expect the Patriarch of Moscow and all the bishops of the Russian Orthodox Church to call Rome and notify that they are now in submission to the Roman pontiff. They are in full communion with Rome. 
with the Pope and they submit their episcopates and their dioceses and their monasteries to the Pope in Rome. This is what we should expect. Just for your reference, this is what it's all about. This is what it's all about. It's about an era of peace and the conversion of Russia. For perspective, how many Russian Orthodox are there in the world? 110 million. It's a lot of souls. It's a lot of people. They have almost 1,000 monasteries, men and women. Most of them are men in Russian Orthodoxy. So when this miracle happens, as it stands now, a thousand monasteries would become Catholic. Currently, there are about 36,000 Russian Orthodox priests with valid orders. They would become Catholic according to what Our Lady said at Fatima. There are 314 dioceses. And think about it. When this happens, there will be a Russian cardinal, maybe several Russian cardinals. There could very well be a Russian pope. This is the promise of Our Lady. She didn't say it might happen. She didn't say heaven will consider it. This is probable. She said, no, Russia will be consecrated to my immaculate heart and Russia will be converted. Converted to what? Lutheranism? No. Converted to Catholicism. Now, what ha we should pray. Let's pray. Let's pray for the conversion of ourselves. Conversion never stops. And for the conversion of Russia. We'll pray the Our Father. Oremus. Nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Pater Noster, qui es in celi, sanctificetur nomen tuum, Adivenia regnum tuum, fiat voluntas tua, sicut in cello et in terra. Pano nostrum quotidianum da nobis odie, et demite nobis debita nostra, sicut et nos dimitimus debitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentationem, se libera nos amalo. Amen. Nomini Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Our Lady Fatima, pray for us. After Mass on Friday, after Mass on Sunday, people came up to me and said, Taylor, is it valid? Is it legit? And I said, well, that's the problem. I'm neither the Pope, nor am I Our Lady. It's between them. You know, this consecration is not ex opere operato, as I understand it. What is ex opere operato? That is a theological promise for the seven sacraments, that when the minister of one of the seven sacraments uses proper matter, proper form, and has intention to do what the church does, no matter how wicked, how many, if the priest has one billion mortal sins, but he has wheat bread, grape wine, he says the words of consecration as defined by the church and intends to do what the church does. He could have a billion mortal sins and the sacrament transubstantiates. The bread and wine transubstantiate in the body and blood of Christ. That's called ex opere operato. By the action, it is activated. By the operation, it is... It's so hard to translate using the word, even though you see the word operate. It is realized i think the best translation is by the action it is actualized because christ is the true minister when it comes to other things like sacramentals prayers and all that the effect and the measurement of the effect has to do with our charity and our devotion and our faith and charity so for example healings like in the gospel, it says that Christ couldn't do many miracles there because of their lack of faith. You see, the sacraments kind of have the seven sacraments have this ex opere, auto, opere operato guarantee. But when it comes to other things in the spiritual life, it requires our faith. It requires our cooperation. 
Now, I understand it. I could be wrong here. But I think when it comes to these sort of prayers, consecration of Russia, I think it's in the latter camp. I'd be happy to be corrected. And let me just say, I am thrilled that in 2022, we are talking on a daily basis about the consecration of Russia, about Our Lady, about her Immaculate Heart. People have had a renewed interest in the five first Saturdays to make reparation for the five sins against the heart of Mary. We are living in a Marian Renaissance. We're also living in a traditional Renaissance where people are rediscovering traditional devotions like Ember Days, Lenten penances, novenas, Eucharistic adoration, frequent confession, frequent communion, all these things, uh, making the Eucharistic fast longer. People are are really bringing their heart to God. Hopefully we also see a, an increase in religious devotions, a growth in the priesthood. So all these things are good. But I'll just admit, this is my own personal reflection, my personal opinion. You can throw virtual tomatoes at me all day, but I just have, over the past three days, I just have a sense that something is not right. You know, we can talk about the Bidens, we can talk about the Ukraine, we can talk about the laptop, which has come up over the weekend. Maybe you don't want to hear me talk about that. You know, Zelensky, the uh, Biden's recent talk about New World Order, digitizing currency, all these, there's all these things that are like ramping up and getting worse and worse and worse and kind of, you know, COVID and those kind of things are sort of fading away. And now it's, I stand with Ukraine. There's even billboards popping up all over America. This Ukraine thing's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And it more and more, as I think about it and pray about it, again, please, you know, you can throw tomatoes at me. Please don't, please don't. This is just my reflection. Again, I'm a dad with a webcam. My opinion in your life means nothing. All right. I want you to understand that this is my personal opinion. This is like, we're sitting around the cooler talking or sitting around having a drink. Well, what do you think? This is me saying, here's what I think. I just have this sense that the addition of the Ukraine has politicized it. Yes, I know Ukraine has a historical attachment to Russia. Um, and I was thinking, well, what are the, what are the reasons to say, rah, 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 this was good? Okay, well, it was the Pope invited all bishops. He said the word Russia and he said the word Immaculate Heart. What are reasons to be not so excited about this? Well, there's this whole problem of Pope Francis. He does objectively teach heresy. We can all agree, I think, on material heresy. Some of you won't, but I think most would. He promoted idolatry, the worship of Pachamama, an idol, in St. Peter's. And I kind of, I'm almost certain it's the exact same spot where they where they put Our Lady of Fatima, the pilgrim statue. It's the exact same spot where they put the Pachamama. And that, that hurts my guts. You know, I tried to add all these things up in my mind. But when I see that picture, and I think that's where the Pachamama was. And we haven't had a public repentance or a public mea culpa or any contrition of, man, I brought an idol into St. Peter's Basilica. That was bad. People say, well, Pope Francis went to confession. Good. But I mean, bringing an idol into St. Peter's Basilica before the tomb of St. Peter requires a public response answer. Also, there was kind of this moving up into it. You know, I asked Portuguese speakers, the verb to make the consecration is in the singular, but this seemed more like a we, not a me, but a we with the Pope, like a con celebration. And I, I don't know about that either. Again, I'm not an expert on this stuff, but I was kind of mm, not, not so sure about that. There was the question of, did he order the bishops or invite the bishops? And of course he said Ukraine and the world. So I don't know. There's to me, I want, let me tell you more than anything in the world. Well, number one, I want 
my eight kids, my wife, and myself to get to the beatific vision, to get to heaven. That's priority number one. But I mean, in a global situation, I want more than anything for Russia to be consecrated. I want the age of peace. I want the age of Mary. I am, like you, drowning for something optimistic. I feel like I'm in the Sarlacc pit. Remember that in Return of the Jedi? I feel like I'm on the Sarlacc pit and I'm just trying to crawl out of it. You know, I'm tired of living under a hierarchy that's embarrassing. I'm tired of heresy. I'm tired of Pachamama shadows, of shadows of McCarrick, silly liturgies. You know, another U.S. bishop today just again admitted, yeah, he was covering up abuse. I'm tired of that. I want the purity. I want the Immaculate Heart of Mary to triumph over all of the sketchiness in the Catholic Church. So yeah, I want to jump up and down and say, rah, rah, I want to be the biggest cheerleader in the world for a consecration of Russia. But for some reason, it just doesn't feel right. And maybe, and I'm going to make a promise to everybody watching, maybe I'm just being too much of a curmudgeon. Maybe... You know, I read the comments. People say, you know, you're just thinking too much about it, Taylor. You're using your, your mind. Use your heart, Taylor. Like Pedro says to Napoleon Dynamite, just follow your heart. That's what I always do. Something like that. You know what Pedro said? You're thinking too much, Taylor. Be excited. Here are the pom-poms of a cheerleader. Jump up and down and cheer. And let's have a optimistic, hopeful Happy weekend where we're like, yes, finally, Pope Francis does what no Pope before could do. Let's get excited. Don't be a skeptic. Don't be a Debbie Downer. Let's get pumped. I want that. I want to be that. I want to be that. So here's my promise to you. I hope I'm wrong. I hope P Pope Francis perfectly fulfilled the request of Our Lady of Fatima. I hope that she was so pleased that her immaculate heart loved deeply the action of Pope Francis, that he's a valid pope, that he has not fallen from the papacy, that he's always been the pope, and that he hit a bullseye in consecrating Russia. That is my hope, and I want it to be true more than anything. But when I think about all these, I start adding up numbers. And I think lightning striking the Vatican when Benedict and the conclave and St. Gallen Mafia and Francis Bergoglio and the Biden family and Hunter and the Ukraine and the war and the media and politicizing Ukraine and Ukraine being added to Russia and all these. And I start adding up, adding up again. I'm using my brain. A lot of you, a lot of those commentators like, well, you're thinking too much, Taylor. But when I think too much. It doesn't sit right with me. So I'm going to make a promise. Maybe next Wednesday, Vladimir Putin calls up Pope Francis and says, I'm coming into the church. I'd like you to receive me into the church. Maybe he and the Patriarch of Moscow fly to Rome and sign a concord of full communion between the Russian Orthodox Church and the Pope, the Catholic Church. And the war between Ukraine and Russia comes to a fast end. And there is peace on earth. There are conversions everywhere. It is clear that Our Lady, her immaculate heart has triumphed. And we enter into an age of peace. If that happens next week, I will get on this camera in tears and say, I have misled so many people. I was discouraged. I had doubts. I was negative. I will be the Apostle Thomas. My Lord and my God, I doubted. And all this time, you, through the Holy Ghost, were orchestrating this beautiful recovery of Catholicism. This Marian age of peace. And I apologize. Maybe it's not next Thursday or Wednesday. or Maybe it's not next one. Maybe it's the next year or five years. But... 
we have to know that if this is the real consecration, Russia will convert. It's 100% guaranteed. And if that happens, miraculously, I will be on here striking my breast. May a maxima culpa. I screwed up. I overthink it. Not overthink it. Overthunk it. Overthought it. I I'm, I'm, hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. So the miracle, if this is it, the miracle will happen. Russia will convert. And I'm going out on a limb here. I don't think Our Lady meant this is going to, uh, Russia is going to be consecrated and then like a hundred years later, Russia is going to convert. Sounds to me, you consecrate Russia and Our Lady intervenes miraculously and Russia is converted to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, to Our Lady of Fatima, to Rome, to the papacy, to the entire Catholic faith. It's a miracle. It's not a gradual over a hundred years, you know, Russia's now 3% Catholic and 7% Catholic. No, we're talking about the conversion of a nation state, of a people. The conversion of Russia. And I hope we see it. I hope we see it. So, as they say, the proof is in the pudding. I don't feel right about this. I think there are question marks that hang over it. And yet I know that a man of eminent sanctity, Bishop Schneider, who I've met several times, every time I'm in his presence, I'm like, this is a saint, this is a holy man. Even my wife, when she met him the first time, he, like, he, she, he is so holy. He is so humble. He thinks this is it. And I honestly, if I'm going to pick someone that I've met in this life who is holy, who's a bishop, it's going to be Bishop Schneider. And I should just probably intellectually defer to Bishop Schneider. I don't know a Padre Pio priest. Wish I did. Um, uh, Bishop Fillet of the Society of St. Pius X. Very optimistic. Very hopeful. Very traditional. Same thing. And you know, we haven't heard from Archbishop Vigano. There's been a lot of silence. And uh, I haven't, ha I mean, I haven't heard from him on it. I do correspond with him sometimes. I haven't heard any information regarding something this big. I mean, this is the biggest thing. Well, I don't know. When you think of the pontificate of Francis, there's Amoris Laetitia, there's the McCarrick situation, there's Pachamama, and then there's kind of a, a drip of erroneous or heretical things that have been said over the years. But this is... Man, consecrating Russia, the Macca Heart, is huge. It's big. So nothing from Archbishop Vigano yet. And I wish we did have something. I'd be very interested to hear what he has to say. So there it is. Let's all hope that my overthinking, that my gut reaction, that my concerns are wrong. Let's all hope that I have to come on the screen and pound my breast and say, mea culpa, mea culpa, mea maxima culpa. I was so wrong. It is so amazing to see the patriarch of Moscow in the Vatican at St. Peter's kissing the ring of the Pope. Did any of us, after a thousand years of schism, did any of us see this coming? This has to be Our Lady. This is the Immaculate Heart obtaining beautiful graces for humanity, even though we are so sinful. We've been so rebellious in the past 100 years with two world wars, communism, abortion, destruction of the family, drug pandemics, human trafficking, large-scale warfare, nuclear warfare, all of these things. And Our Lady obtained this grace to convert us. I hope it is the case. And I just, back to the beginning of the show, Our Lady said it will happen. It will 100% happen. If Francis met the criteria, 
It will happen. There's no doubt about it. If somehow he did not meet the criteria, we have to wait more. But it will happen at some point. All right. Well, I think that's a, a good opportunity to say pray the rosary every day. And let's also commit ourselves starting today that we're all going to try to fulfill the first five Saturdays. That means if it's the first Saturday of the month, you go to Mass and you go to Confession. Let's make that commitment. And let's read the Bible every day. Let's find traditional liturgy. Find a traditional parish, parish, traditional priest, traditional Latin Mass. And let's traditionally catechize our kids to know Jesus Christ, to know Him, love Him, and serve Him. All right, we're going to close with a Hail Mary. Ave Maria. Nomine Patris, et Fidei, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum. Benedicta tu in molieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, or pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et or mortis nostre. Amen. Nomine Patris, et Fidei, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Friends, thanks for watching. Again, pray the rosary every single day. Keep your eyes on Jesus during the Lent. These 40 days are for Him. Lent is for Him. He fasted in the wilderness for 40 days for us, and he gave up his flesh on the cross for us. We can give up meat. We can give up chocolate. We can give up more as an act of love to him. Let's do the first five Saturdays. Let's be joyful. Let's know that this is going to happen on God's timing. And until next time, remember, our Lord Jesus Christ is you're the light of the world and the salt of the earth. So go out there and be salty. God bless and God speed. Thanks for watching. If you like, please hit the subscribe button to get more videos in the future and hit the bell to be notified. And if you'd like, please click the next video.